Joining us now is Sarah Isger Flores, Republican strategist, former deputy campaign manager for Carly Fiorina. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Well, I found that that exchange and we played the whole extended version, that exchange with Hugh Hewitt, a really interesting window into Donald Trump's reasoning. You don't get him to really uh, be introspective that much. I think that might be as close as he ever gets. Hugh Hewitt lays out what in the normal sort of terms of political debate in this country would be a reasonable argument that you would normally expect a politician to be making. And Donald Trump basically says, yeah, and nobody would hear me if I did that. I have to say it this way. Do you think there's something to that from a strategic standpoint? Is he accomplishing something by talking this way? No question. And we saw it work extraordinarily well in the primaries. He got $2 billion in earned media. He won the primaries. The question on everyone's mind and what I think the ongoing argument is, does that strategy, the all press is good press strategy, work in a general? What we're seeing right now is that uh, it keeps you in the game, but it's not winning. I mean, that's my question, because certainly it gets headlines. And like I said, everybody who hears this in the media, there, there is sort of this question of what do you do with it? And, and, and you know, if you, if you sort of, uh, the more sort of outrage there is in the reaction, the more attention it gets. There's the question, is that what he's looking for here? But we talked about this on the show last night, this question of uh, a temperament in Donald Trump. Just because he's making the headlines, if he's making the headlines because he's outrageous, does that end up hurting him? I think if you're a Trump voter right now, you're not voting for him because he's the most politician-y candidate. He's the guy who says it in the easiest way for everyone to understand and agree with. You're voting for Donald Trump for exactly what we saw today, which is he's a guy who speaks from the gut. He doesn't always say it perfectly, but you agree with his point. He's tough. He's a winner. And Hillary Clinton is corrupt. She's a liar. She's everything that Beltway DC has been failing at for a long time. So I think for his core following, there's no question that this strategy not only wins, but a day like today where all the media talk about is what Donald Trump said about ISIS pointing out the president's failures, Hillary Clinton's failures. That's a win for Trump. The question is, does that help expand his base? That has yet to be seen. Yeah, well, what's your sense on that, though? If, you, if you're looking at this campaign, because that's been the, the question all along since he emerged from the Republican primaries. He's basically trailed since he became the presumptive nominee. A couple polls briefly put him ahead, but he's had that challenge you're talking about. Take that hardcore base, expand it. Does this help or does this hurt? You know, I actually think that this in particular, probably overall, maybe it's a wash, maybe it helps. Past things have definitely hurt, but this does highlight a weakness of the last eight years of the Obama administration. It highlights a weakness of Hillary Clinton's. We're all talking about it. And so I think it, those is moments that, do Sarah, tend just, to I don't, mean, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just, is, is yeah. that what people are talking about, or are they talking about how outrageous he is? That's, that's the, the question I keep coming back to with Donald Trump. It, it's sort of like there's that truism you hear. There's no such thing as bad publicity. I've always wondered about that. I've, I've always thought there is such a thing as bad publicity. <laughs> There is such a thing as bad publicity. I don't know that this is it. You're right. You and I might be talking about the language he used, but I don't think that's the conversation going on in American living rooms tonight. Uh, the Trump voters that I know are talking about how he's highlighted the failures of this administration. And if you're on the fence, if you think that the world is in chaos, that this is a scarier place than it was eight years ago, I don't think this moves the needle for you towards Hillary Clinton. Right, let me ask you a bigger picture question, just st from the standpoint of a Republican here, because I've seen this not necessarily today. I think a lot of Republicans, and you heard it from Hugh Hewitt there in the interview, they knew how to take what Donald Trump said and sort of translate it into a more politically acceptable argument. But we saw it earlier this week uh, with Donald Trump and that Second Amendment comment in North Carolina. Republicans had the instinct to defend him but you could see didn't know how to. And I heard, I must have heard three or four different explanations from Republicans who wanted to defend Donald Trump, but they didn't know, they didn't quite know how to, how to interpret what he said. What, what's the specific challenge you face as a Republican when he makes comments like this that, that are so, they're blunt and ambiguous at the same time? Well, this is where having a 
uh, fully built out campaign structure is enormously helpful in where we see some of the failures of the Trump campaign. Their surrogate operation hasn't been as robust as the Clinton campaign. Their ground game, their fundraising operation, we can talk about several different categories, but here we're talking about the surrogate operation. Uh, you know, in a large scale presidential campaign by the end of August, heading into Labor Day, you know, to use the Olympics, you're heading into the finals. The semifinals are ending right now. We're not in prelims anymore. And so you want your surrogates out there prepared to defend anything your candidate says. Now, in past cycles, we've seen the media jump on silly stuff. You know, the binders full of women, what you pointed out with John Kerry even maybe. Uh, and so I do think voters are primed to see this as the silly season. And a lot of the like, well, he didn't phrase it right, doesn't resonate with voters anymore because the media cried wolf so often. So particularly for Republican voters, those things are becoming less important. At the same time, the campaign needs to start ramping up that surrogate operation heading into this, you know, post Labor Day, we'll call it the Olympic finals of presidential season. All right. Sarah Isger Flores, former deputy campaign manager for Carly Fiorina. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we've got a lot more election news ahead, including Donald Trump's controversial stop in Florida earlier today, plus one of those weird issues where the Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton campaigns overlap. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.